Hello, everyone, and welcome to um, this workshop, to how to commission art workshop. My name is Daniel Valdoreña, and I am um, QCA's programs assistant. Um, please feel free to drop your name, uh, pronouns, affiliation, um, artistic discipline on the chat, so we get a sense of who is in the room. And um, also a few housekeeping notes. Uh, please stay muted during the session, you already are. Um, and feel free um, also to drop your comments and questions uh, on the chat throughout the workshop and we will try to address them um, during specific moments um, during the workshop. And we are going to be using a presentation for most of the workshop. So once I share my screen, you can pin down uh, the speaker's um, uh, screen uh, by selecting that mode on the upper um, left, uh, on the upper right corner on your Zoom um, window. Um, so I think um, that with further ado, um, we are going to uh, start. And thank you so much for RSVPing and thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we are ha very happy to present this first um, how to commission art workshop as part of QCA's artist commissioning program. And first, we hope everyone is um, also safe and sound and healthy and healing from everything that is going on. And we hope this time is an opportunity, a conversation for everyone to, to reflect on everything that has happened and that is happening uh, through the arts. Um, I am about to share my screen uh, so we can uh, get started and have uh, a, a, a small introduction. Um, so this is the workshop that is happening today. And for those of you that are not familiar with us, uh, the Queen's Council on the Arts QCA from now on is one of the five uh, borough, borough arts councils in the city of New York. And our mission is to foster and develop the arts in the Queens County and to support individuals, art, individual artists and arts organization in presenting their cultural diversity for the benefit of the community. And one of the programs uh, QCA runs is Artist Commissioning Program from now on ACP. And um, ACP is a program that democratizes uh, the traditional commissioning process by enabling uh, local community members or what we call art commissioners to fill gaps in American culture by awarding commissions uh, to Queens artists. Uh, for the next uh, two years, ACP will award uh, $10,000 uh, and, and $2,000 commissions to Queens dance projects that resonate uh, with Queens community members uh, to challenge all stories that highlight underrepresented protagonists. And in fact, uh, we wanted to share with you that uh, the open call for art commissioners uh, to engage with ACP is now live. Um, QCA is seeking uh, five local community members or art commissioners, as I said, to collectively award a total of um, 40K um, to dance um, artists and organization through group and individual commissioning process. And the art commissioning role is ideal for arts advocates, for arts lovers, for passionate community members who basically wish to become part of the next generation of art support supporters, arts leaders in Queens. And artists are welcome uh, and no formal background in the arts is necessary. And we actually look forward for that kind of, um, of people, of community um, members. And of course, if you enjoy this workshop and want to learn more and want to engage more with QCA um, and with um, art commissioning, um, we welcome you to the, we would like to have you in the info session we are hosting on April the 20th at uh, 6 p.m. And then applications for this uh, program are due May the 2nd. Um, however, uh, we know uh, that not everyone is um, can commit to a full year program or might um, yes want to get a sense of our, what our commission in, um, is. And for that reason, um, in order to act, actually open the access to art commissioning um, to everyone interested, um, 
in our commission and QCA decided to expand the formats in which ACP uh, re reaches our constituents. So it's not just like a very um, demanding program in terms of time, um, and, um, but also like um, different ways for people in Queens to um, become art commissioners. Um, we are about to publish an ebook titled How You Can Commission Art that will be available in our website um, and, that, and that you will be able to download and, and follow and for everyone interested in art commissioning. And based on that um, ebook, we decided that we also wanted to uh, develop a one day workshop um, on how to commission art. Um, basically, to, to, to put together you know, an interactive uh, moment which aims to, to guide you through the process of commissioning uh, meaningful art that resonates with your values for as little as $100. And basically empowering and enabling you to spread the word about how art commissioning belongs to everyone and not just to the privileged. And um, you know, along these lines, I am so happy, uh, so, so happy. So uh, delighted to introduce you to our guest speaker today. Uh, Saron M. Chen. Uh, Saron is the executive director and founder of Creating Sanctum, a digital magazine focused on amplifying the behind the scenes creative process of artists. And um, in 2021, so this year, Saron uh, launched the Catalyst Commissions, which is an initiative to catalyze civic partnerships and democracy via the power of arts. And Saron was our very own and very loved arts commissioner um, with QCA in 2019. And based on their experience, um, she developed um, some of the programs that she will be presenting and commenting on today. So we are so happy to have you, um, Sarah. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me and excited to talk to you all today. And so now basically let's um, get started. And I wanted to give you a um, um, brief workshop overview. Um, first, we are going to talk about democratizing the art commissioning process in a very um, um, small, um, you know, uh, in, in a very small uh, part of the workshop um, that I have already introduced. Then uh, Sharon will help us uh, to bust uh, some myths and preconceptions about art commissioning. And then, um, the, the biggest uh, part of a uh, chunk of the workshop will be a step-by-step -step guide to art commissioning, which, uh, as I said, is um, based on the ebook that we are about uh, to publish. Um, if we are um, joined uh, by newcomers that were on the beginning, again, feel free to drop on the chat your name, your pronouns, your affiliation, uh, what you do, why um, you're here, and so we get a, a sense of who is um, in the room. Um, and let's start with this first par part, uh, this first um, section of the workshop, democratizing the art commissioning process. So uh, for, the, for this um, part, we have a very um, maybe simple question, but uh, I think it's, it's the one, what is, an art commission, right? We, I have been talking already for more than maybe five to 10 minutes about art commissioning all the time. And, uh, but we have not defined what, what an art commission is. So I would like you to drop on the chat uh, your definitions of uh, art commission. What is uh, an art commission for you? What do you think we mean uh, by art commission and what it refers to? Um, feel free to um, drop in on the chat or feel free to uh, think about it or feel free to, to, to reflect on how this uh, concept, our commission, is usually used.
Okay, so um, we have a lot of um, uh, a lot of definitions, a, a lot of information there, um, and I think that is very well connected to this um, definition we have um, here, um, um, which is that an art commissioning is when an individual or group pays an artist to create a new work for a specific purpose. And of course, we could add everything that you have said and develop um, better and a more complex um, definition of art commissioning. Um, and based on this definition and based on everything you shared, also we would like to know who in the room has experience in art commissioning. If you can raise your hand um, virtually or manually, if you have your camera on, or if you can um, say a few words in the chat, who in the room uh, has experience um, in art commissioning in whatever sort? Okay, um, so actually I would like to um, invite another um, ACP, uh, ACP -er, um to the conversation, Marcus Yee, which was an ACP awardee in playwriting, who would tell us uh, this fantastic uh, quote uh, that sp speaks very much about how um, democratizing um, the art commissioning process has to do a lot with busting some myths and preconceptions that usually leave uh, some people outside of the process. And uh, from QCA, from ACP, that's what we aim to do. We aim to uh, en enable people to become art commissioners. So not only the privileged can commission art and basically to integrate art commissioning into our lives as something that we do such as supporting uh, local uh, stores or um, buying uh, other kind of products that belong to our community. Um, so this uh, introduction was very much um, an introduction, this first part, democratizing the art commission uh, process, was an introduction to the second part um, of the workshop, um, I was mentioning how ACP BAST uh, has this mission. And the second part is uh, titled Basting Myths and Preconceptions. And um, for this um, section, um, we are going to take advantage of our guest speaker today, uh, Sharon M. Chin, who has, uh, who has a tremendous experience in art commissioning and community leadership, specifically in, uh, in Queens. And as I said before, uh, Saren was part of the ACB program in 2019 and 20, if I'm right, um, uh, Saren. And um, we are going to um, go through uh, three myths on art commissioning. And in this um, dialogue with Saren, uh, I'll be joined by um, Kelly Olsen, uh, who is the program uh, manager of ACB at QCA and who will be also facilitating uh, this uh, workshop with me and, and Sharon in, in future uh, dynamic that we're going to do. Uh, so this, this um, uh, title, Busting Myths and Preconceptions, um, is um, a title for us to have a conversation about the different myths around art commissioning. Um, let's start with the first myth. Myth one, you have to be wealthy. To commission art. So what do you uh, have to say about that, Saren? Yeah, so let me start by just taking a step back by saying why I think art commissioning is important. Um, so I think art commissioning is really important because you take control of the culture and narratives that get put out into the world. You're not waiting for some organization or institution to put it out. You are saying this is a gap in society. I can help fulfill it. So I think it's really important to understand that art commissioning is one way you can create the culture that you think the world needs and deserves to see. Um, so when we look at this myth, the first one, you have to be wealthy to do it. Um, I think it's really important to understand it doesn't take a lot of money to do this. I think you have to think about the scale and scope of what you want to bring out into the world. And if you're going to do it alone, 
Um, but once you sort of understand those dimensions, you might need just as little as $100 to like say, hey, artists, I have this idea that I think you are a great candidate to work building this work and you can help me create it. Um, I think something else that we should consider besides, you know, how little it might cost to invest is that with um, crowdfunding, you have the ability to organize um, a large group of strangers to help support the creation of the type of work if you think it's worthwhile to produce. Or maybe you have 10 friends and you each want to give $100. So suddenly you have $1,000 and you can create a giving circle that you as a group decide together to approach, you know, creating something. Um, um, so the money doesn't have to be your own. I think that's sort of one mental um, pathway that we have to get out of. Um, but another mental pathway is when we think about commissioning, in part because it's always been such a historically privileged process, we don't have to think in the scale of $10,000 or $200,000. Um, we can think at a more sort of accessible scale at $100 or $200. There are ways in which we are all curating the aesthetic or cultural environment all around us, whether it's the furniture we put in our house or um, the nice dinner that we create for a special occasion, what are the ways in which that we can support the local artists or the cultural community around us and build that into um, our lifestyle? Like as someone who uh, does professional development for artists for a living, we talk a lot about the ways that we can train artists to empower themselves. But what if we also started talking about the ways to train the world to better financially support artists? And I see commissioning as a way to do that. Um, it's just a part of teaching and training people to flex the muscle of start getting used to supporting artists at the $100 and $200 scale on the regular and that would change things. What if for something like if you wanted to do a special occasion um, for someone's birthday, um, you commissioned a song score at $200 or $300 level. Um, at scale that could, that could mean something and start to create a different type of arts infrastructure. Yeah, I can share a personal story that for my sister's and brother-in-law's engagement, I commissioned a portrait of the two. And I think, you know, that artwork would never exist otherwise. And I think it's a simple and practical way to support an artist and to have something beautiful in their home and in you know, our lives. Um, yeah, and actually like what Kelly uh, put in, um, in those beautiful words is what we aim with this workshop. Uh, because we actually would like to then spread the word uh, about what we're going to be talking about uh, today. Um, that I think um, what uh, Kelly said about how we usually put the focus on artists and how uh, all the heaviness uh, is on their shoulders. Um, and rather, we should also, uh, for people who don't identify as um, artists, but who believe in the power of art, we, will, we, we would have to also uh, think about how we can also support artists and uh, to, to better um, financially support them, uh, as Kelly said. And, I, and I, um, ACP is trying really hard and trying to, to make this like a kind of movement um, about that art commissioning. Um, so the first myth, you have to be wealthy. Sharon uh, said no, uh, so that's, that's said. And the second uh, two, uh, the second myth, sorry, is that you have to be culturally savvy, whatever that means, uh, to commission art. Um, what do you think, Sharon? Yeah, so I think um, we're all very quick sometimes to give away our power, right? So we think that only those who are educated and maybe study art history or are experts in a field really know what good art looks like and what should be funded, right? But the reality is, is that um, there are so many different like art at different kinds of levels and art for different places and different mediums. So it's hard to say that there's only one person who really has that authority or expertise. So I think when you think about commissioning, you have to take back that power and understand that you have the authority and the capability to decide and support art and its creation. 
So I think that's something that's really important to remember. And I think when you think about the ACP program, you think about who are the voices that it tries to bring to the table. It's voices from the Queen's community, people who are not necessarily leaders of museums or institutions or people who have a platform or a stage. It's just people who care and people who really believe that it's important. It's funny that you said that people are um, shy about assuming power, but I actually kind of see it as the opposite is that people don't want to give that up power. I think those that are curators at, um, you know, 4020 museums uh, don't want to give up that position um, and want to be like the arbiters of culture. Um, and if it's opened up to everyone, they lose that status, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, but to answer this question more specifically, um, in managing this program, I've had the privilege of working um, with art commissioners that come from all different types of backgrounds. We've worked with people who are um, tax accountants or a retired lawyer, or just you know, a mom, an art lover, you know, all different walks of life and their thoughts um, in evaluating the work or discussing the work were as astute and thoughtful and astute and thoughtful as any senior curator that I've ever spoken to. Um, and so from personal experience, I can, I can vouch for the thoughtfulness of Queens community members. I, I really like something that uh, you said, Sarah, about um, about care uh, and, um, and about um, caring for each other, right? Uh, sometimes we believe that uh, art uh, needs to be, um, uh, you know, like it needs to represent an idea or needs to, uh, it needs to be beautiful or needs to be powerful. But um, we also need to think about art as a, as a, as a mean of, of caring um, and as a mean of community building. And I think this kind of, of, um, of, of putting, underlining that kind of fact is, is something very important. And we have our last myth, which is that the process has to be complex. It has to be, I'm sorry, a headache. Uh, I'm sure you had a lot of headaches um, uh, without commission and Sharon, <laughs> but I'm sure they were good headaches. Uh, so what do you think about this myth, that the process has to be necessarily complex? Yeah, so the process is how you design it. So it can be as simple as saying, I want a painting from this artist, and you just reach out to them and say, hi, hi, will you paint something like this for me? Um, and that can be a really simple sort of kind of thing to do. Um, you might be like, my home, I want it to be more beautiful, let me do this. Um, I think if you want to make it more complex, e.g. build in more voices or build in more in-depth participation with the artists in the co-creation process, that's when it can get more complex. Um, but that's sort of kind of choice that you are making as a commissioner in terms of how engaged you want to be. Um, I will say that for a lot of projects that I've worked on, because I think about, you know, building in equity, building inclusivity. Um, I've created maybe more of a complex process with um, different panelists who help support the decision-making um, and you know, evaluation rubrics, but you don't necessarily need all of that. You can, hop, you can make the process at different levels. And actually um, today, the third part of the workshop, um, it's going to be a step-by-step uh, step -step guide to our commissioning. So if the process um, what um, is complex for you, you can always follow that, you know, like guide and um, use that guide as a tool for you to um, commission art. Um, so we have a few um, minutes now for uh, a couple of questions uh, from the audience, from the attendees. So feel free to raise um, your uh, hand uh, virtually or physically, or you can drop the question in the chat. Um, I think we should take advantage of uh, Sharon being here with us and about her experience. So if you have any question, please um, go ahead. Um, if you could um, help me with that, Kelly, because I cannot see everyone in the room in the in the room because I'm sharing my screen. Um, so if you can, like, please um, 
I call them people. So I no problem. Of course, it can be a question, a comment, something that you would like Saran to uh, build upon, or maybe. So we have a comment on the chat by um, the trader. Um, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, any thought about pre a pre-design process, Parks Department? All right, can you repeat the question? Yeah, on the chat it says, um, I, I assume this, do you have any thought about a pre-design process uh, such as uh, the Parks Department, which is uh, a, uh, an example that I am not familiar, familiar with? Yeah, I'm not familiar with it either. Um, Deprater, if you're, are you, is she able to unmute herself and maybe tell us a little about it and we can talk to it? Good morning. Um, I'm, <laughs> this is wonderful. I just wondered, like, uh, I thought it was really um, um, important that you stated the process, you can design the process, it can be simple. And uh, the only the commissioners, um, the commissions that I'm familiar with, even other people going through it, not directly myself, when they try to get it a public piece done, say like something particular in a park, and the pro or the a city space or something, that the process is extremely complex as opposed to a free wielding. Um, uh, institution like this one, uh, where you can commission people and it's all self-contained. I just wondered what what you thought about that kind of process, where you jump through fifty hoops and fifty million dollars, and you know, <laughs> the hundred dollars still takes twenty steps. So I was wondering, what did you think about that, or have you experienced it in any way that this process does not uh, enter that kind of um, jungle of network webbing uh, where you really get discouraged and don't want to be on the panel. You don't want to get into that. So it's a negative impression in terms of getting a piece of work done. So just wondering about that. Yeah, I think um, if you are commissioning work for specific platform that is not your own and is owned by the government or a parks department, they probably have a lot of procedures to ensure their own liability and right. it is a pain to go through. But I think if you start the process of having a conversation, understand A, is it even a possibility? And what is the process that you have established? You sort of understand it and can decide, is it worth the effort uh -huh. or is there a more appropriate institution? Uh -huh. um, that's the way I think about it. Um, but I think the value of these larger platforms um, is maybe their scale and reach. So maybe it's worth going through the headaches to get there. <laughs> yeah, it would have to be worth it, yeah. So I'm enjoying this one because it's a very independent format uh, where you can, where it really makes me feel something can get done, you know? So uh, it's a great contrast, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Sharon? We have probably time for one more if you wanna unmute yourself now or uh, drop them in the chat. There will also be uh, more time for questions at the end of this workshop as well. I have a question for Sharon. Um, mind you, I'm here, I'm supposed to be very quiet just watching and taking notes, but it occurred to me that the question I wanted to ask was, are there any in the past or in the future perceived uh, any limitations to the venue where the art may occur? I think um, you as a commissioner know the answer to that or should think about that as you approach framing the project. Um, so if you think about um, talking with the artists about you know what you want to do and where you want to be seen, you can sort of frame that out at the very beginning and say like, hey, I envision this being performed as if it's like a dance, like in the park. Um, so they understand that and they're saying like, here's the scale, the size dimensions. It's like, that's a very different place from like a black box studio or 
in your living room uh, or on a video. Like it sort of kind of lends itself to how you think about what you want to create. Does that help, Gustavo? Yes, but, but what I think what I meant is in terms of the organization, does the organization place any limitations or criteria that has to be met in terms of where the location is? In other words, if it is a black box, but the black box is located in, in Brooklyn, is that a limitation? Because it should be within Queens. Yeah, so Kelly, I think this is a question for you. Yeah, I can take this one. So we'll actually be uh, diving more into the artist commissioning program info session on um, April 20th. So I can speak and will be speaking more to nuts and bolts ACP questions. Um, but the short answer to your question is we'll be showcasing the artists uh, final projects at our new headquarters in Long Island City. Um, so that will be uh, where those projects will take place for this upcoming ACP. Um. I'm so happy about that question because uh, that means that people are starting to think about uh, commissioning art. And that's actually what the third part of this workshop is about. And we're going to spend um, you know, most of, it, uh, of the workshop on this step-by-step -step guide to art commissioning, um, which of course is going to run uh, just for you know, an hour or less than an hour. Um, again, this is um, like, something that you can expand upon and that you can uh, work on, but we wanted to create this workshop for people interested in art commissioning, to have the opportunity to know how art can be commissioned by anyone without having to commit to um, a long um, a year long program, uh, expanding this way, the accessibility to, to art commissioning, that, 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 that what is the main purpose of um, our, our program. And this is the most interactive part of the workshop. Uh, so if you didn't, uh, please uh, take a notebook and a pen or open a work, uh, a word document, um, or if you have your iPad, whatever you use for taking your notes. Um, and the purpose of this guide, we would like you to, at the end of this session, to have at least an speculative, a speculative sorry, idea but kind of clear of the whys, the what's, and the hows of the kind of art that you would like to commission. And maybe this could be, you know, the beginning of an art commission. Um, so let's start with the first step that we believe is one of the most important, if not the most. Um, the first step is what is your goal? And that's something that um, might sound like um, um, very um, simple, but for us, for an institution that um, works in Queens and for people devoted to a, 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 a diverse community and fighting for social justice, this is something that is really, really important. And I believe for everyone in this room as well. Um, and basically, we are, in order to answer to this question, uh, that is going to be the ground of what we are going to do later, we would like to do first a free writing exercise. That's five minutes for you to uh, think about the three questions that you're going to see on the screen. Um, what communities do you belong to? What communities do you want to advocate for? And what ideas are you interested in supporting? So let's take five minutes to reflect on these question, questions, um, take your notes, and then we will discuss them in breakout uh, rooms.
to create, I think you asked a question about communities. So I think you can think of communities as groups you identify with or uh, groups you care about. Okay, so I'm sure you already have a lot of uh, information uh, and, and your answers uh, to these questions need to be uh, shared. Um, so now we are going to divide the whole group into three breakout rooms led by um, Kelly, Sharon, and myself. And uh, we would like to have a conversation um, based on these questions about um, this um, prompt. I am interested in commissioning art that, um, based on the answers to your questions, I am for like uh, the end of this um, sentence um, is gonna look like in a it's very specific uh, and very, um, yeah, in a very specific way. Um, so in a moment, you should um, um, receive an invitation to join one of the breakout rooms and we are going to um, reconvene in 12 minutes. So it's um, um, 
6.5 uh, now. So we'll see um, everyone back at um, 6.57. So this is the part where we do our Zoom wizardry. So you won't need to do anything, just sit back and you will be virtually transported to one of uh, a room with one of the three of us. And then when time is up, you will likewise be virtually transported back into the main room. So see you on the other side. So I assume now we are in the main room, uh, even if it's just us, um, I think people will join us, yes. Welcome back to the main room. We're gonna wait a few seconds until everyone is back. That was interesting. I'm sure like Sharon's conversation is even more interesting because they are still there. Mm -hmm. It was stimulating, very stimulating. I think you really think about it. Yeah, I think now we are getting- Very creative. Um, hmm. 
let's let's wait for a few more seconds. I like how prompt you are. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's definitely appreciated. It's part of the job description. <laughs> I'm one of those people, so I really like that. <laughs> Um, welcome back to everyone. Um, I hope you had um, um, a good conversation with you there. Um, so basically now we have the why, right? We know somehow our goal, why we want to commission art. And now we are going to focus on the what uh, for the next uh, four steps. I'm going to uh, share my screen again so we can go to the um, presentation and now we are going to um, again take advantage of Sharon and uh, based on the next um, four steps uh, we will ask her first how uh, she did uh, how she followed these four steps um, when she was commissioning art in her multiple roles as an art commissioner and then we will give you about a minute to uh, right after her answer to reflect on how you could do it um, um, how you could um, do that um, step so step two is what do you want to commission right we know like, why we know our goal but what the actual thing if it's a thing um, and so sharon what do you want to commission Hey, so I needed to uh, unmute myself. Um, so I wanted to commission art that furthered civic engagement in New York City communities, specifically in Chinatown, a place of identity and place, Queens, um, the borough of my heritage and where I think a lot of everyone on this call is from, um, and just in any New York City community that needed it. So this is a project that I called the Catalyst Commissions and um, that's that's what I wanted to do. Um, so now it's your turn. Um, how could you do it? Um, now, uh, what would you like oh, to commission or what could you um, commission? Just one minute to take your notes. Okay, so the third step is who do you want to commission? Uh, we have talked about the what, the thing, but what's uh, what about the, the, the person or the people behind it? This third step would be who do you want to commission? And in your um, case, Sharon, um, who did you want to commission? So in the case of the Catalyst Commission's projects, um, it was really important for me to have artists and creators who understood the issues that they were trying to address and understood what was important in New York City communities. So I thought about the pool of artists who could do this kind of work. And I made it really important and clear that one of the criteria was that they had to have a strong connection to the New York City community. Um, and then in terms of the kind of art that I wanted to create, which is a little bit, a bit going back to the what, I was willing to work across different kinds of mediums. 
So artists that really foster creative engagement. And I was willing to work with um, dancers, choreographers, visual artists, social practice artists, and musicians, because I thought these were the types of mediums and genres that could really foster creative engagement in, in communities. Thank you so much, uh, Saren. And now again, your turn. How could you do it? Who um, could you, um, who would you like to commission art from? It can be someone you already know, or it can be a community or a group of people um, or someone, um, um, someone that uh, you have a relationship with. So one minute. Okay, let's go to step four. Who, sorry, who, um, who will select the art? So I oh. mentioned, go ahead. Yeah. What about in your case, Sarah, huh? sorry. Yeah, um, so I mentioned before that my project, the Catalyst Commissions was designed to empower community voices and I thought about it empowering voices at the level of the artists, but also at the level of the audience, and then also at the level of who gets to make the decisions. So I decided to not make the decision by myself, but to solicit opinions and perspectives from a panel of community voices. So I did an open call um, where I announced the opportunity, the mission, and really got people's motivations and reasons for why they want to participate and allowed those voices to be part of the process. Nice, thank you, Sharon. So now it's your turn, how could you do it? Um, who uh, would you like um, to select the art? Um, can be you or maybe it can be more people, but it's good to think about it. And let's go to the fifth step, the last one of this uh, second part of the step-by-step -step, um, guide for a commissioner, who um, is how uh, will you fund the work? Um, and how was uh, this in your case, Sharon? Yeah, so I was committed to this project idea um, with or without any additional support, but as an individual, my commission would be much smaller. Um, so I knew that in order to grow the idea and to have a larger reach, 
I would need to raise additional funds. Um, so I was very, very fortunate and I applied for a grant which helped underwrite the funding for the Catalyst Commissions. So I think that was a really great resource. Um, and if I hadn't had that, you know, foundational funding come through, I would have done, you know, crowdsourcing like with my friends, with my network, just to say like, hey, you're just in supporting this idea and growing it that way. Nice. Actually, Sharon just shared a few examples of how to actually find the work. So maybe you can um, pick one of them or maybe think about um, one of yours. So take um, a minute to think about it. Okay, so we are already done with step five um, and we are already done with the why and also with the what, right? And now we are going to get into the how of the art commissioning process. We know um, our goal and we somehow know what we want to commission, who um, we know about the fund, and we want about the people that will, uh, that will um, select the art. But what about putting this um, process and putting this project in motion? And now, uh, before we um, start discussing the next three steps, the last three steps, six, seven, and eight, I will like uh, Sharon to um, expand a little bit more on um, her project Catalyst Commissioned. Um, she has already shared a little bit about um, about it, but um, I I think it would be helpful for everyone to get to know it a little bit better. So then your answers to the to the different steps um, can can be um, well understood. Sure. Um, so the Catalyst Commissions was a commissioning effort that I started uh, in February of this year where I basically put out a call for artists in the genres of dance, music, social practice, and visual arts um, to produce work that would catalyze civic engagement and increase participation in their communities. Um, and you know, this is, this is the year of elections in New York City. Like New York City's future is on the line. We have so many seats of government that are coming up. Um, so I think it was a really important in terms of that timing, but I think also, you know, in the wake of um, the past four years and the increasing, you know, uh, violence that's happening in certain communities, I think it's even more important to have communities which aren't necessarily as visible or as empowered sharing their voices to have a platform and an opportunity to share that. So I think this is the art that I want to support and create. Um, so that's the nature of the project. Um, so, Daniel, do you want me to just start talking about how I did the call now, or do you want to introduce uh, questions well, first? Well, actually, thank you for that. And I'm going to ask you another question um, uh, to you, uh, which might be helpful for, for everyone in the room. And so how could you let the artist know, or how did you let the artist know about this program? Yeah, so in terms of the who, I had already known that it was important, me, important for me to reach artists within the New York City communities or who have a strong connection. Um, so I actually decided to connect with community-based art organizations, such as the Queens Council of the Arts, Think Chinatown, to tap into their expertise and their networks to make sure that the call would go out to 
you know, a dedicated group of artists who are interested in this kind of work. But beyond that, um, we all live in a world of social media and there are many, many, you know, different groups and affiliate organizations. So it was really important for me to make sure that the call went out to those organizations. So I put out social media posts, you know, sharing the opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and I also thought of arts adjacent organizations such as, um, you know, the Queen's Gazette, community boards, and I put out that opportunity to them and asked if they would be willing to share and found even people through those routes and avenues. And once you did that, how could the artists respond to your call? Once um, you really spread the word, how the artists get your, they get their um, proposals back to you and to the panel? Yeah, so I created um, a website which described the mission and the goals of what I wanted to commission. And I listed the eligibility criteria for who I thought would be a good artist to participate and then write mediums. And I put all of the information out there. Um, and then I gave them the opportunity to apply for the opportunity um, using Submittable. Um, so Submittable mm -hmm. is a online you know, application platform. Um, which makes it really streamlined to receive this information, but you don't need that. You can just take emails. Um, and what I asked for, you know, I asked for details like, what do you want to do? How do you want to do it? Show me some of your work samples to make sure that I fully understood what they were trying to achieve. And that's how artists were able to engage with the opportunity for this commission. Great. And we get to the final step. Now we have all this in um less than 45 minutes uh or a little bit more um which project could you select or actually Sharon, if you can share with us a little bit about which projects you actually selected and and why yeah so um i don't want to let the cat out of the bag because i have not yet announced it to the artists but we have selected five projects um, across you know visual arts um music etc and the way the projects were selected was by conducting um, panels where all the panelists were able to review the applications in advance, you know, and understand them. And then based on what they thought the strongest community impact would be, um, we had a deep and detailed discussion about those and ultimately determined, um, you know, the five finalists for the Catalyst Commissions. Um, if you are really interested in staying involved and understanding, you can, um, come to my website, you know, createasanctum.com or look at my Instagram and you will see this information as it is announced. Nice, thank you so much, uh, Sharon. And before we conclude and have some time for uh, questions, um, uh, first, of course, I would like to thank you for your generosity. And also I would like to know if you would like to share any kind of final tip or uh, final advice to the people um, in the room for everyone that uh, signed in uh, tonight um, on this um, on this uh, art commissioning uh, process. So um, I just want to echo like Shirley Chisholm, who I think has said, if they won't give you a seat at the table, bring your own chair. And I think that's sort of kind of what the idea of art commissioning is. Um, if they aren't creating the culture that you want to see, you now have the power to, to make that universe, that, that creation and that story heard in the universe. Um, I was really lucky to be in a group um, with, I'm gonna say it, Gustavo and Ya Yun Ten, um, who had really compelling ideas about the kind of art that they wanted to put out there in terms of empowering you know, unheard voices. So I think commissioning is, is a way to do that, to help make sure that those voices and stories are heard. Indeed. Thank you so much, um, Sharon. And I, we are going to have now some time for questions, uh, but I um, didn't, uh, I don't want to finish without saying that we have, we hope we, you have enjoyed like this workshop um, whose purpose uh, was to make again accessible to more people um, what QCA has been doing for so long. And also what is behind ACP, the art, uh, the artist commissioning uh, program, which is democratizing art commissioning, and this means supporting untold stories to receive the art that we see in the world, but also 
uh, making accessible the resources for this. And I echo again what um, Kelly uh, was saying at the beginning about um, not just putting the uh, pressure on artists, but also making people and, and the community and everyone um, aware that it's also on us to support um, our arts, so to support the arts and artistic creation. Um, so um, if you enjoyed this workshop and are interested in uh, joining, us, joining us and commissioning the, the art um, that you want to see in the world, we invite you to become an art commissioner um, as part of ACP. Um, and again, this is a program that invites um, local uh, community leaders that we call art commissioners to, create, to become part of a cohort that are worth a total, a total of 14 or 40 uh, K um, to artist organization through a group and an individual commissioning process. But of course, again, uh, that amount is not needed if you actually want to commission art. Um, the applications are due May 2nd and um, the info session uh, will take uh, place on April um, the 20th at uh, 6 p.m. Uh, via Zoom as well and we can um, uh, we will share all the details that day, but you can also check our website. Um, Kelly just dropped the, the link on the chat, so feel free to, 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 to look at it. Um, so I will stop uh, sharing my screen so I can um, see you. And uh, now we have about 10 minutes for questions for comments, uh, for things that you would like to, we would like, that you would like us to um, expand upon. Uh, so feel free to raise your hand or we are small groups or um, uh, speak up. Welcome questions or comments or questions for Sharon, questions or comments about art commissioning or even the artist commissioning program in general. I want to thank everybody for uh, being part of this today and for the, uh, the Arts Council to have created this. Uh, give uh, time for us to feel creative during our time at home uh, and to ponder as to what we're going to do in the future and how each one of us is a universe unto ourselves in terms of creating art for everyone else. So thank you again. Although I'm supposed to have just been sitting here taking, taking notes. So make believe you didn't see me. <laughs> thank you, Gus. We appreciate that. I'm glad that it inspired you to feel creative. It's good to see you. Question. Prior to this, how did you uh, go about the business of um, the, you know, commissioning artwork? For example, the one that was in LaGuardia Airport where the artists were in the, the hangar um, and they had larger works on the outside. What's the difference between now what you're proposing and how you uh, went about that work? Yeah, so the projects that you are referring to was part of a separate program that QCA um, put forth called Artport, which mm -hmm. um, we didn't necessarily categorize as commissions, but, you know, nomenclature aside, yeah. it was um, uh, kind of an artist in residency program placing artists in Terminal A at LaGuardia Airport. So it gave Space to work as well as showcase those projects. And so they developed work that was in conversation with the history of LaGuardia Airport and gave uh, passersby um, travelers um, something to engage with um, as they were traveling. Yeah. Um, and so that had sort of studio space and stipend and had that sort of lens and purview. Um, whereas the purpose of this particular workshop is Daniel so eloquently explained was more about enabling community members to um, enact the art that they want to see in the world, um, which came out of our artist commissioning program, where we receive 
at funding to support community members to do the same. So you would go about suggesting a project, uh, a per, say myself. The, the difference is, is the suggestion comes from the person who wants to see a piece and it becomes the focus of the project. I'm not exactly clear how you turn that around just now uh, in terms of commissioning a piece and the goal of this project that we're participating in now. Could you just expand a little bit on that? Sure, let me see if I can make it clear. Artport was, we had funding, artists applied and they got a grant um, to have studio space mm -hmm. and do a project. Okay. okay. Um, we did a panel process, the panel deemed whatever was most appropriate. What we're pitching now is trying to train and empower individuals to commission art based on their own ideas, mm. rather than QCA dictating yeah. that idea. Okay. Hope that's clear. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, very different shift. <laughs> Thank you. Sure, and also just to quickly respond to Cindy's question in the chat, yes, I can absolutely share um, the PowerPoint and the recording from today's event with all the participants and to anyone who's interested. And based on um, this presentation uh, was based on the ebook that we will uh, very soon uh, upload to our website. So stay tuned uh, because it, it is uh, fully developed there and you will have time to to review all the steps and all the information provided um, with so much more detail. Yeah, I will say that I was um, an arts commissioner with the QCA ACP program and it was an incredibly wonderful community. Um, people who are really passionate about Queens, people who are passionate about art and sharing voices. So I think if you have the opportunity to be part of it, um, it's it's like a wonderful space to be in and you produce real outcomes for the community. So that's just a small plug. And I also see another fellow art commissioner in the house, uh, Yao Young, if I can put you on the spot. Um, it's just, thank you for coming out. It's just cool to see people who are part of the ACP. Any other questions or comments before we close? Okay, so if there are no more comments um, or questions, thank you again uh, for um, RSVP and for this event and for attending and for being a part of this first uh, how you uh, how to commission art workshop. Um, it's been it's been a journey, and I think um, today um, this works this workshop um, has shown us how uh, people is how people are interested in art commissioning. Mm -hmm. And of course, again, uh, I think we, we everyone um, will join me in thanking Sharon for her generosity and for sharing with us um, all those tips and all uh, that advice. So thank you so much, Sharon. It was a pleasure to have you. And again, the info session for ACP is on April the 20th. The deadline is May the 2nd. You have all the information in um, our website. And also, um, probably um, these workshop will happen again uh, for people interested in um, knowing how this process works. So if you like it, uh, please spread the word. If you didn't, uh, don't say anything. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Uh, and um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your night. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you for joining. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all for spending your Thursday evening with us. We're honored. Well worth it. <laughs> Take care. Stay well, everyone. Enjoy the beautiful spring.